In modern times, when democracy is adopted by almost every country around the world, the African continent is witnessing political upheavals. The continent with most of the failed states has become the heaven of militia culture. Currently, Sudan is making the biggest news regarding political stability and military rule. And when we talk about India's role in Africa, there's a lot to discuss. But as of now, the biggest priority is our people in Sudan. So let us quickly sum up what happened in Sudan and what is there for India. Namaste and welcome to TFI Post. I am Atul Mishra. Let's begin. After weeks of heightened tensions between the Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, which is a paramilitary group, and the army, clashes broke out in Sudan. According to recent updates by the UN, around 200 people have died and more than 1,800 have been injured. As reported by the Indian Embassy in Khartoum, an Indian national named Albert Augustin was also killed by a stray bullet on Sunday. Albert worked as a security manager for the Dal Group company and hailed from a village in Kerala's Kannur district. The ongoing conflict in Sudan traces back to April 2019 when President Omar al-Bashir was overthrown following widespread protests. Despite his ouster, civilians continue to demand democratic elections and a civilian government. A power-sharing agreement was reached four months later, creating the Sovereignty Council with military and civilian members leading Sudan towards elections in 2023. Abdullah Hamdok became Prime Minister in August. However, the military seized power in October 2021 and deposed Hamdok with assistance from the same paramilitary RSF that they are fighting today. The new governing structure was established with Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan representing the military as the de facto leader and Muhammad Hamdan Dagalo of the RSF as the vice president of the ruling council, serving as the second in command. The military declared that it would hold power until elections in July 2023. Soon after the coup in 2021, relations between the military and a paramilitary force started to sour as they disagreed on how to integrate 10,000 RSF personnel into the army. Dagalo wanted to delay the integration for 10 years, but the army said it would take place in the next two years. Since its formation in 2013, the RSF has been accused of human rights abuses, including a massacre of protesters in 2019. Recently, the RSF was redeployed around the country, which the army saw as a threat leading to a violent clash between the two sides. The struggle for democracy has long been prevalent in Sudan and after the 2021 coup, it has become even more profound. However, in rare clashes where the army is fighting paramilitaries, the road to democracy seems vague. It was anticipated that the transition to democracy would be completed by the announced date of June 2023, but it has now been compromised. Almost every country has appealed to end the violence and solve the disputes through negotiations, but it does not seem like peace will be restored soon. According to the civilian group fighting for the establishment of democratic rule through elections, he said, this is a pivotal moment in the history of our country. This is a war that no one will win and it will destroy our country forever. In response to the clashes and to assist Indians in Sudan, the Ministry of External Affairs has set up a control room. The MEA has also issued an advisory through which the Indian government has requested Indian nationals to stay indoors as clashes continue after two days. According to official data, the number of Indians in Sudan is around 4,000, including 1,200 who have settled in the country decades ago. The third largest country in Africa is going through one of the worst political phases. It is unfortunate that at a time when the world is talking about artificial intelligence and Industrial Revolution 4.0, countries in Africa are striving for political stability and civil liberties. Nevertheless, the situation remains tense and the MEA is keeping a close eye on the developments. A third advisory was also issued, which called for people not to venture out as some incidents of looting were reported. 
The ministry has again called for people to stay inside their houses. Meanwhile, the possibility of an evacuation process cannot be denied as the MEA in its advisory has claimed that the situation will continue for a few more days. Past experiences in Ukraine, Yemen, South Sudan and Israel, Lebanon show that India takes firm steps to evacuate its citizens from foreign lands during crisis. If the conflict between the military and RSF escalates, India may opt for this option, as it is alleged that the US and Russia are backing RSF and the army. Respectively, situations for such an evacuation can prove to be favorable for India.